Hey, Chris here with a new sort of Tomb Raider video for you today. This isn't gonna be a retrospective or a talk through or even a throwback kind of video. The end of one year and the beginning of a new one is the perfect time to acknowledge the past, but also look ahead. So this is really gonna be about the future of Tomb Raider. What do I, as one of Lara's millions of fans worldwide, wanna see in a future Tomb Raider game? Here is my wish list. First up, Globetrotting. It's been 12 years since Globetrotting has properly featured in the Tomb Raider series. And before you say it, no, I don't really consider Rise having Syria and Siberia as true Globetrotting, in the same way that lots of people don't consider The Last Revelation as having Globetrotting because it has Cambodia and Egypt. There's no written rule to it, but I'd like at least three different places around the world, maybe more. Give the developers a real chance to properly flex their creative design skills. They can branch out and have Lara explore vastly different places all the way around the world. Some people found the Last Revelation's Egypt-centric levels a little bit samey. Some found the snowy icy landscapes of Siberia very, very samey in Rise. And some found the deep, dense jungle environment very samey all the way through Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You get the picture. But could we at one point have a game that features everything like that? like the sandy deserts, the snowy icy caves, the dense rainforest jungles, and then on top of that, the deep dark underbelly of some modern city. I mean, can you imagine that in amazing next gen graphics? Except it's, well, it's current gen now, isn't it, I suppose? But can you imagine what that would look like? Next up, hub areas. This is just a favorite thing of mine in Tomb Raider. When you encounter an area where you can't seem to progress much further and it forces you to go off and look in completely different directions. It's a trope that featured in the classic games, in the Legend series, and even in the reboot series. Think about the cliffs of Japan, the geothermal valley in Siberia, and dare I say it, Paititi. But why do I want them? Because in a game that could so easily go down the route of just following one path, Encountering something that forces exploration is really good. It's a fundamental keystone of the Tomb Raider series. And I'm not saying that Lara should go from hub to hub to hub to hub, but one or two in a game, really cool. As an addition to this, throughout the last few games, Lara has encountered boundaries that require her to upgrade her skills or find new weapons in order to progress. Think of finding a shotgun in order to blast through barriers. It's just another way of having to find things like keys and switches in order to progress. And in that mind, I'd really like her to find some really old keys or really old artifacts that act like keys in order for Lara to progress. Think about it. You find one half of an amulet far away down some ancient cavern, and then you have to go and explore in some dank tomb down in a completely different direction where you find the other half. Yourself or Lara puts them together, and then you have a key which could open the way forwards. On to a controversial one, the return of manual grab. I can almost hear the cries now that that's so dated and auto grab is so much more modern. And you know what? I couldn't disagree more emphatically. For me, it all comes down to one thing, interaction. I remember back during the time of the Legend trilogy, Manual grab was only ever mentioned in terms of gaming challenge, and I always saw that as wrong because it's not about challenge. Pressing a button to grab doesn't make a game more difficult. What I want is to feel more involved in the game, more in control of Lara. If we're controlling her, let us control her. Let us have responsibility over her actions. If I want her to jump, I press jump. If I want her to grab, I press grab. If I want her to keep on grabbing onto something, I hold the button down. If I lift my finger off, she lets go. If my finger slips off, she slips off. That's on me. It's, you know, my accidents become her accidents, and it's not just because of a bit of pre-scripted code. So I think increased interaction is the key to more immersion in the games. And that's something that I'd really love. And on that note, I'd love a, an actual dedicated interact button. It's something consistent that we know that if we press that button, Lara will interact with whatever is in front of her or around her. Uh -huh. 
a method of interaction can't be old fashioned. It can be different. And to give a few more examples of games that use this function, you can think of Shadow of the Colossus, immensely popular game that's had as many re-releases as Skyrim on every other console. And more recently, parts of the PlayStation 5 Astro's Playroom, which uses manual grab in order to climb. And can you imagine how amazing PlayStation 5's adaptive triggers would feel if you were having to use them to control Lara's climbing? <clears throat> Next one, new moves. The Tomb Raider Underworld development team had a really cool mantra that they used when developing this game. What could Lara do? And I think that is a really, really cool thing that I'd love to see return. She's a very strong, fearless, independent woman who runs around out in the most dangerous parts of the world. And that was what gave rise to the concept of what could Lara do. How many times have you found yourself playing another game and thinking to yourself, that'd be really cool if Lara could do this? Why shouldn't she? Imagine Lara with parkour skills, increased movement-based abilities with the environment. To take inspiration from other places in the series, how she used the grapple in Tomb Raider Legend. It wasn't just in order to repel and climb and swing, but she also attached them to things in the environment and moved things around remotely. From Beta Angel of Darkness, swinging into things in order to knock big pieces of environment over and smash through into new areas. Melee combat. When Lara is up close and personal with some enemies, have her be able to throw some kicks and punches to get out of trouble. Even make use of the environment to fight. Pick up rocks or stones or sticks or metal bars off the floor and be able to throw them or use them against the enemies. Whatever is in the environment could and should be made use of. It's another way of fully immersing Lara in her own world. Are you armed? After a fashion. And briefly adding to that one, I'd like to see less invisible walls, particularly when they're just things like logs or bushes or completely random things that would just not stop anyone. You know, things that would be able to stop her would be actual walls, unclimbable slopes or dangerous rapids or traps or cliffs. These are things that are much more believable in terms of impeding Lara's progress. Now for one which if Twitter and online forums and Discord are to be believed, then it should be a popular common choice. A more confident Lara. Lara certainly grew between Reboot and Rise and Shadow. She went from an inexperienced student to a more seasoned adventurer. But as Rihanna Pratchett said in her interview, Lara wasn't afforded much confidence back at the start of the series because she was still learning and coming to grips with her own role. Now, a big point of Shadow of the Tomb Raider was Lara becoming the Tomb Raider she was meant to be. In other words, the natural conclusion to that story arc, becoming who she was supposed to be, not becoming the Tomb Raider she used to be in the old games. Big difference, and I think a lot of people miss out on that. So now she knows her capabilities. She discovered Yamatai, she slew an ancient soul snatcher, she discovered two lost cities. She's made decisions that affected the entire human race, and she's even fought the embodiment of Kukul Khan. And on top of that, and most importantly, Lara faced death and accepted it and went to sacrifice herself for the greater good. Now, if the next Tomb Raider game is a continuation of this same Lara's story, at whatever point in the future, I would expect her to maintain that confidence. She has faced death and moved past that kind of fear. Now is the time at which she could become sharper and sassier and more prepared and confident. And throwing a one-liner in here and there would please so many people. Anyway, busy girl, got to go. Next up, slow the hell down. So often during a casual piece of gameplay, I will just be thinking Lara is moving around the environment at rocket speed. And these developers have gone into so much effort to actually produce such incredible, detailed, vibrant environments. And we're just zooming past them without being able to see them properly. So I'd really like to be able to appreciate them more. And to be clear, I don't mean add more places where Lara is forced to walk through an environment, because that is something that I really don't like in gaming. But I understand that that's been used a lot this generation or previous generation now in place of load screens, but hopefully the more powerful processors on current generation would have made that kind of thing obsolete. 
What I would like would be things like slower animations when she's climbing. If the developers really want to steer Lara away from that sort of superhero trope, then lean into it. Players aren't going to be put off because Lara appears to visibly put a bit more effort into climbing and to have slightly slower animations. Something like that Unreal 5 tech demo would be perfect. Convolution reverb allows us to measure reverberation characteristics of real spaces, like actual caves that we sample, and reproduce them in virtual spaces. I think I would be kicked out of the fandom if I didn't mention dual pistols. Yes, I'd love to see them return, but not at the cost of the bow and arrow, and only with strict conditions. If all Lara can do is run and walk and hide and shoot, then I don't want them. I'd want them to completely overhaul the combat system so Lara is much more acrobatic again. I want to see her jumping around, diving, bouncing off walls, even doing a few backflips, contribute towards melee combat while fighting. I've seen people say that they'd love to see action more like Black Widow from Crystal's Avengers game in a future Tomb Raider. Maybe not quite as comic. This next one is one that I've wanted for a very, very long time. Treasure maps. Lara raids tombs, she hunts for treasure. It's kind of a big deal for her. And I literally couldn't think of a more fitting mainstream game to feature treasure maps than Tomb Raider. Think of all of those skeletons that Lara has ever walked past. Picture at one point you find a treasure map on one of them. Uh -huh. And it's not a compulsory thing, it's not a main part of the game, it's just an optional thing that mm, maybe you stumble over this thing. And picture it's a piece of parchment that Lara opens and it's a coded puzzle that needs Lara to either find some clues or match a piece of environment to something that's been jotted down on this map in order to find, I don't know, an ancient treasure hall. Maybe it's that dead adventurer's treasure stash that he's hidden somewhere. Maybe it's healing equipment, or even like imagine a retro weapon from back in the time when that adventurer was still alive. In order for this to work, picture something like Red Dead Redemption or the treasure maps in Assassin's Creed, and just imagine how fitting it would be in Tomb Raider. Finally, a simple no-brainer one for me, more spin-offs. More Lara Croft and the, more Lara Croft Go. We've seen recently the announcement of Tomb Raider Reloaded, and that fits perfectly within this, as it's just a small side game while the bigger games are being made. Something fun to keep us busy. And I go as far as to say not even games that always have to star Lara, but games that fit within the larger Tomb Raider universe. Think of Curtis Trent's Bloodline game that was originally scheduled back in the early 2000s. Maybe a co-op game with Pierre and Larson and their time working at Natla Technologies. An occult adventure with Amanda. A history-based game with Anaya. That Professor Eddington game that they really wanted out of Tomb Raider Underworld. Even an Indiana Jones style game with, dare I say, her parents would fit so well as a prequel to the reboot series. An adventure in New Zealand with Jonah a Sam spin-off, young Von Croy, young Conrad Roth. There are so many possibilities for games that could be worked on by separate teams while a big team is working on the next main Tomb Raider entry. And just to point out the obvious, these are just completely optional games. No one is forcing anyone to play them, but they could be so much fun to play and just to keep people busy and chatting about Tomb Raider and Lara Croft during these long periods of time when the big main games are being made. It's just a bit of fun after all. And with that, I'd like to wish everyone happy holidays and a wonderful start to the new year.